Hey, I hope you're watching tonight. Uh, next time, you're going to be cleaning the, the, the ring mat with your body because I'm going to retire you from boxing and destroy you. Roberto Duran is a boxing legend born into the poverty of Panama. Till this day, Duran remains a national hero among his people. In the decade of the 70s, the hands of stone was pound for pound the best fighter in the world. Now in the 90s, Duran is looking for another title, the fifth of his illustrious career. No one will block Duran's path to the crown, the man with 65 knockouts over his illustrious career. Duran just keeps on ticking. The hands are still made of stone and the heart of a lion. I think he's absolutely crazy. He's absurd. He's just, I don't know, well, obviously he's a little nuts. He's still fighting. You know, he's, what, 49, 48? He's crazy. He's just a crazy guy. Two years ago, the world of Vinnie Pazienza came crashing. Doctors said that he would never fight again after a severe automobile accident. But Pazienza made one of the greatest comebacks in sports history. He returned to the ring to win the Junior Middleweight Championship. Pazienza is 38-5 with 27 career knockouts. And he, too, has the heart of a lion. A relentless attacking style. He has moved from the lightweight class up in weight and Pazienza still packs a powerful punch and always thrills the crowds with his aggressive style. Don't forget, you've always been a chicken and you're not the kind of guy that can intimidate me. And next time you come talking to me in the press conference, I'm going to slap you so you respect me because that's who we are. And if you put, you, you even lay a finger, man, I'm going to knock you out without gloves. Don't, don't touch me because I will knock you out. You know, I'd like to make a little deal with him before the fight. I'll have uh, my lawyer draw up a contract. If I beat him, he should go back to school. I mean, he's only been living in this country for over 20 years. He should go back to school and learn how to speak English. And if he beats me, I'll quit boxing, and I'll join the Panamanian bobsled team. I think he was joking about the last bit, but the sentiment of the rest is deadly earnest. They don't like each other, do they? They don't like each other very much, do they? Now, how do you see it developing, this second meeting? I think it's got to go on from the first one. The first one, you know, a very, very good fight. But they just seem to hate each other more. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, the story so far. Roberto Duran was born in Guarare, Panama, back in 1951. Today, the streets still bear his name. He's a national hero. He dominated the lightweight division from 1972 to 1979, when he went up to welterweight. He beat Sugar Ray Leonard a year later to win a second world crown, but the rematch was remembered for something unusual. Leonard jabbing by getting hit too. Durand would never live that moment down. He won a third world crown at light middleweight in 1983 and then met Iran Barkley six years later. That victory brought him the WBC middleweight title in fight number 93. A couple of years later, he challenged Sugar Ray again for his 12 stone title, but was a loser on points. Then, in a routine tick-over fight against Pat Lawler, this happened. Durand here is uh, been hit sideways on at the body. Now, what is this? Uh, and he's claiming some kind of injury here. Well, this is mysterious, and uh, one hates to say it, but the shades of the uh, no mass incident with Sugar Ray Leonard way back in Duran's career. After several more nothing fights, Duran met Pezianza for the first time, and by round five was well in command. Durant swears this time 
It'll be different. All I'm doing is just praying for the fight to happen right now. I'm going to be in a lot better shape than I was last fight. I'm going to be tired of this punk. This rare footage of a five-year-old Pazienza, that's him on the left, tells you how long boxing has been in his blood. But the real inspiration for Vinny was a film that many boxers owe their livelihood to, even today. The first of the famous Rocky movies. After a prolific amateur career, he began to make his name as a pro, dishing out the punishment in his busy all-action style. Just ask Melvin Paul. The first of his two world titles came also at lightweight when he beat Greg Haugen. His second title came against Gilbert Dealey of France in the 12th and last round. And Lou Duva thinking now, one minute, baby. Less than that. It is over. The referee steps in. And this is where Vinny's story really begins. After a serious car crash in which he broke his neck, he was told he would never box again. Six months later, still wearing his angel brace, he began his rehabilitation. Not bad, huh? Everybody thought I'd be on a couch. Like a big fat potato. Six months after that, the brace was gone, and Vinny was back doing what he loved most, boxing. I said to myself, I said, I'm, I'm going to make this happen, or else I'm going to die trying. And, you know, it's, it's just as simple as that. And so to the rematch. There's no question Duran and Pazienza really hate each other. He just belly ached himself into another fight, and it turns into a big money fight. And, you know, the bottom line is, hell, I'll fight him again because I can't stand him. I hate him. So, you know, it's pretty cool when you get a chance to beat somebody up that you really don't like. Gary Norman on two larger-than-life characters in every way, and one of the consequences of their incredible career so far is that they are big draw cards, as we expect to see, in Atlantic City. Now, you 